In today's Gospel reading, our Lord states that it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. And in today's first reading from the book of Sirach, it was pointed out that the way you get to know someone is through their speech. So often, our true character is revealed by how we speak. And I think it was especially referring to the fact that we can judge a good character or a bad character based on how they speak. So some people, for example, they might tell lies, they might exaggerate things, they might deceive people in different ways, uh, they might be critical of others, they might uh, call people names, say bad words, and sometimes it's not just what they say, but also how they're speaking. Sometimes people are filled with rage. They're very angry. And all of these things manifest what is really inside of the person. And it's not just our speech, but even our actions, the things we do and the things that we fail to do. All of these things manifest to us our character. As our Lord points out, you know, out of the, the, the um, an evil person produces evil, for it is out of the heart that these things come. So a good person produces good fruit, an evil person produces evil fruit. Now we might say, okay, well, let's say some people are really good, we would put them on this end, and some people are really bad, we would put them on this end of the scale, and most of us are somewhere in between. Because the reality is that sometimes, you know, certain people, they might push our buttons in the right way, or we just had a bad day, or we're just so stressed out because of whatever, we lose our cool. And sometimes we get angry, sometimes we say things that we shouldn't. And of course, it's not good that we do this, but we have a fallen human nature, so it tends to happen. But the reality is, is that some people are on either this side of the middle or on this side of the middle. In other words, some people, maybe they're more prone to manifest kind of negative behavior or just the way they talk. You know, for example, some people are very critical of others. They're very nitpicky. And this is exactly what our Lord is getting at in today's gospel reading. And he gives us a beautiful analogy. He talks about someone who has a speck or a tiny splinter in their eye. And as we know, it can be very irritating, but sometimes it's so tiny that we can't take it out ourselves. So we need someone to help us to remove that speck or splinter from our eye. And of course, in order to do that, the person must have good eyesight, a steady hand. But if they have a log in their own eye, they're blind. And what our Lord is pointing out is that the, sometimes these individuals who think they can remove the speck or who think they can correct and should correct others, they're blind to their own sinfulness. And because they're blind to their own sinfulness, they're not capable of charitably correcting others. And we sometimes fail to realize this. Because some people, you know, they can act very nicely at, at times, but other times they're evil. But whatever sins we commit, they affect every aspect of our lives. Eventually, they're somehow going to manifest. Those, those sins are going to manifest themselves. It's going to affect our relationships, our ability to interact with others. And so it's important that we make the effort to see ourselves as we really are. Some people are just blind to some of the sins that they commit. Some people have this attitude, you know, sometimes, especially when couples are arguing, some, sometimes one spouse has the attitude, oh, well, I'm not the one to blame. She's the one to blame. She's the one who has issues. She's the one who has problems. She's the one who needs to go for counseling, not me. And most people know that whenever there's a conflict, both people are usually at fault. None of us are totally perfect. So I, I've experienced this often, and I'm not trying to put men down. It's, it's not only men, but it tends to be men often in relationships. I've experienced this many, many times. 
But the reality is that sometimes, as I said, we're blind to the fact that we too have faults or might be doing something wrong, or maybe we're not doing the good things that we should be doing. Pulling our weight around the home or, or helping you know, your, your spouse or, or taking care of the kids or whatever it may be. So we need to examine this for ourselves. Now think of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the religious leaders at the time of our Lord. And they were very good at observing the minutest details of the law, the external precepts of the law. And they were very, very critical of our Lord. They accused him of breaking the Sabbath because he healed on the Sabbath day. And our Lord was trying to point out to them that, you know, while they're good at observing the minutest details of the law, they have neglected the weightier matters of the law. The practice of charity. They were blind to this. And as time went on, they turned more and more against our Lord because our Lord was simply trying to correct them in a charitable way. And yes, eventually our Lord, you know, even referred to them as whitewashed sepulchers because they were just so blind to their own sinfulness and, and to their own attitude. So what do they end up doing in the end? They end up calling and arranging for the death of our Lord. In other words, their blindness, these religious leaders, people who are supposed to be religious, close to God, they end up killing our Lord or arranging for his death. Now, in, in reality, yes, we're all responsible for the death of our Lord, but they kind of arranged it. They were so blind. Now, even if they didn't believe that Jesus was God, even if they didn't believe he was a prophet, still, why kill the man? But they did this. Think also of the two thieves that were crucified with our Lord. One of the thieves, the bad thief, reviled our Lord, criticized him. If you are the Messiah, save yourself and save us also. Whereas the other thief, he kind of rebuked the, the, the bad thief. The good thief, he said, you know, we are deserving what we're getting. But this man, Christ, he's innocent. He hasn't done anything. And he said to our Lord, remember me when you um, come into your kingdom. And our Lord said, this day you will be with me in paradise. So in other words, the bad thief was blind to the identity of our Lord, but he was also blind to his own sinfulness. He didn't feel that he deserved to be getting what he was getting. And so he was just filled with anger, resentment. Whereas the good thief in his humility recognizes the identity of Christ and acknowledges his own sinfulness and that he's deserving of what he's getting. So it's important for us to recognize our own sinfulness, our own shortcomings. It's important for us to be humble. And when we recognize our own sinfulness and make the effort to overcome our own sinfulness, it's going to improve our relationships. It's going to improve our ability to be charitable to the people around us. You know, when our Lord gives us this, this analogy of removing the speck in someone's eye, he's not saying, oh, well, because you are all sinners, you shouldn't correct anyone. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying you need to be perfect before you can remove someone, correct someone's fault or remove a splinter. He's not saying that because it's obvious that a splinter needs to be removed from our eyes. And we need to be corrected. And sometimes it's good to be corrected, but most of us don't like to be corrected because it's humiliating. And yes, it makes a difference if the person is correcting us with charity, compassion, or if they're just, you know, putting us down, making us feel bad. So we have to do it with charity. So our Lord wants us to do it, but he wants us to do it in the right way. Now, whether we realize it or not, if we are attached to sin, if we have a, have a habit of sin, especially if it's serious sin, it is going to affect our relationships. It's going to make us more selfish. It's going to make us more proud. The more we give in to sin, the more proud we become, the more selfish we become. And in that state, we lack charity. 
And often people who give themselves over to sin, often they're more prone to anger, they're more prone to be manipulative, to be demanding, because they want things their way. And they're not good at dealing with, you know, negative things or difficulties or hardships. So they tend to point the finger at others and blame others and to be very critical even of minute things. And so for all of these reasons, let us do what we can as we approach the season of Lent, which will be beginning this Wednesday. Let us, uh, you know, the, the three areas that we're supposed to focus on in Lent is, is to intensify our prayer life, practice self-denial, and greater works of charity, especially around the home, to those closest to us. Well, if we undertake these practices, hopefully God will enlighten us and enable to see some of our faults, our shortcomings, and hopefully overcome them so that our relationships are better and that we ourselves are better persons.